Everyone has heard about Thomas the Tank Engine, but does anyone actually remember a completely unrelated but aesthetically similar show called JJ the Jet Plane? Hi V, hi everyone else, and welcome to Gaping Chasm. Today I am doing a video about a show that I remember very fondly from my very young childhood, and that show is JJ the Jet Plane. It's a show that I've like asked people about. I'm like, oh, do you remember JJ? Oh, did you like JJ? Oh, I love JJ. And a lot of times I get responses that are like, people either don't remember JJ, or they remember him and find him completely disturbing. And I will admit, looking back today, it's not the most pleasant thing to watch. But JJ wasn't made for adults. It was also made over 20 years ago, so it's not exactly like pristine modern day children's content. For what it was, it was really good. And I actually have some really fond memories of it. I don't remember ever watching it on TV. I do remember that we had a VHS tape that only had a couple episodes on it, but I remember being really afraid one night of thunderstorms, which when I was a kid, it was an absolute terror. Thunder and lightning both freaked me out immensely. I remember going into the basement one of these nights of a horrible thunderstorm, and either my parents weren't home or they just couldn't come and like hang out with me. I needed to kind of entertain myself. Now, I was young. I was probably not even in kindergarten yet. Maybe I was in kindergarten, but I don't think I was. I turned on JJ and just watching JJ the Jet Plane helped me forget about how scared I was. It was a comforting show to me when I was a kid. The sun is rising high up over Terry Town. Friends taking off and friends touching down. And that's where you'll find that one of a kind, JJ. I used to think that Thomas the Tank Engine and JJ the Jet Plane were actually related shows, that maybe JJ was a spin-off. I know that Thomas the Tank Engine has always been pretty popular, but he's still popular today. I think they're still making new episodes, or if they're not, they're definitely still making new merchandise because kids are always out buying it, and I mean, what child doesn't love collecting trains? But yeah, I just assumed JJ was a spin-off, but turns out it's not. It's actually, it's completely own creation. Obviously it was kind of taking like a sort of similar aesthetic to Thomas. It's got human type faces on planes instead of trains. I think that was just in large part because kids are drawn to like trains and planes and construction and stuff like that. JJ was actually created by Deborah and David Mitchell and it originally aired on the Learning Channel. And while it was airing on the Learning Channel, it was actually the most watched children's program on that channel. JJ. The show began airing in 1998 on the Learning Channel, but was later picked up in 2001 on PBS where it Kind of exploded. I mean, the Learning Channel is great, but PBS is where shows go to thrive, especially children's shows that have already been proven. David Mitchell has said in interviews that he always wanted to get his show on PBS, but he saw it as a 5,000 to 1 chance. Most of the episodes for JJ were created during the two years that it was on TLC, but more episodes were commissioned by PBS once it started airing there. In 2005, they even repackaged a lot of the episodes to become JJ mystery episodes, where they added a new character named Lena who helped JJ solve mis mysteries, like how do planes fly, and other sciencey questions that kids would definitely be interested in. PBS continued to air reruns into 2009, and then the show kind of faded away from the general consciousness. It does still live on in VHS and DVDs, where like I had a couple episodes would be packaged together, even those have kind of gotten sparse. JJ. Every episode of JJ, by which I mean like there would be like two, ep two ish episodes per episode, like they aired together in like one chunk, kind of like how a lot of children's content does it. So every one of those like little chunks of episode would feature a original song for JJ and his friends to sing that were, you know, about like learning things, discovering things, messages, lessons, important stuff for kids. All the music was composed by Stephen Michael Schwartz and they were all performed by his group Parachute Express. Stephen is actually a pretty well-known children's music creator, I guess, and he is, as far as I can tell, still making music for children today. Parachute Express does not exist anymore. They seem to have dissolved. I'm gonna be real, looking back at some of these songs, they are not catchy, they're not fun, they might have good lessons, I guess, that kids would enjoy, but I, they were kind of awful to listen to. No offense to Steven or Parachute Express, but when you compare it to other like children's content music, these are not great. 
Okay, editing Sam here. I still stand with what I said. It's not great music, but after listening to them a bunch of times, they're kind of a bop. I can't wait. I gotta fly. I'm turning flips. And here's the reason why I'm finally gonna see myself for myself. When I was just a little plane, I learned about the stars. How even though they seem so close, they're really very far. I learned to see the shapes they make and how they're never changing. Yet even though they stay the same, they're always rearranging. I picked my very own one night and always watch to see Sometimes here, sometimes there I learn where it would be I'm gonna find where the flowers have been No more flying as fast as the wind Y'all come and see how the colors begin All on a switch around Let's remember this feeling before it fades Yeah, from the tip of my nose to the tips of my rollerblades <sighs> Just smell the clover Whoops, I'm turning over, look, nope, I'm okay the show follows JJ and his friends as they navigate life at the Terrytown Airport and to some extent Terrytown itself. JJ does have a bunch of friends, both planes and human. I believe Thomas the Tank Engine does the same thing where they take the talking train magical realism element or in JJ's case a talking plane magical realism element and combining them with real life actors which is something that is definitely a hallmark of children's content but I still really like it. JJ has a bunch of different friends both planes and human. I'm not gonna go over all the friends but the main cast of like children friends include Tracy who is JJ's best friend forever according to Wikipedia, Snuffy who can skywrite and who's very shy, and Herky, who has a speech impediment. I really could not find much else about Herky. I don't remember these characters at all. I remember JJ very vividly, and I remember the one main human character, Brenda Blue, also very vividly. But all the other characters, I was reading through the Wikipedia page and I was like, um, who? And I was looking at the songs and I was like, um, I don't remember them. They're also like adult plain characters, but I, again, I remember them even less, at least like the children playing characters, like, oh yeah, I remember JJ had friends, but the adult ones, I was like, what? So, like, I guess they're probably important to the plot of the show. Like I mentioned, Brenda Blue is the human character most associated with JJ. She's the one that you see in the theme song, and in most of the episodes, she's the one that communicates with the planes. Something I didn't remember also, but upon learning about it, find it really interesting, is that one of the human characters, Miss Lee, who is the Terrytown librarian, she is actually deaf and speaks with ASL to communicate. I love this. That's so cool. Like, awesome. And one of the planes, Tracy, actually can communicate or understand ASL. The planes don't have hands, so I'm not sure how she communicates back. And of course, before I forget, there is also Lena, who is the repackaged character included in the JJ Mysteries. JJ. So like I said, JJ is the product of David and Deborah Mitchell. I couldn't find that much information about Deborah Mitchell. It seems that David kind of took the forefront. He's also the one that seems to have remained in the industry, which I'll get to in a minute. But David Mitchell was like an outsider to the industry. As far as I could tell, he was a pastor for some small Texas towns for a couple years before his first son was on it on his way and he decided he wanted a more steady job where he could rely on a bigger paycheck than being a pastor so he took a six-figure job again i had a hard time finding where or doing what but that seems pretty good but then he left his six-figure job only a few years later in 1994 because he was like i gotta go create jj he's admitted in interviews that jj made him like no money 
for pretty much the longest time. Like they were in the black constantly. JJ was not like an immediate money maker or anything. He worked at it for a while, which I think is pretty cool. Obviously he's not coming from like bare nothing. He had a six figure job. He had money, he could pour into it. But he also wasn't like a somebody in the field of children's entertainment until he decided to create JJ. JJ, while it took off on TLC, really spread its wings, pun intended, when it was on PBS. JJ. For the time it was made, the show was actually pretty advanced. The backgrounds are miniature sets, which I love a good miniature. And obviously there are live action actors, which they combine with the computer model planes. The face tracking was actually pretty high tech for the time where it was, it was lip syncing and face tracking. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie though, as much as the general population has forgot it, so has the internet. There aren't that many sites about the show, there aren't that many interviews. I've found some here and there, they're all from like smaller publications that for whatever reason did not archive these interviews with like David Mitchell. It's not like the show was ever controversial, it was just a regular children's show about talking planes, and people liked it. It was it. People liked it. The websites that would have been related to JJ at the time just don't seem to exist. Wonder Wings, which was the production company that David and Deborah ran, I can't find anything. The URLs that I have found just link back to the Wikipedia page, which is unfortunate. Even the Wayback Machine wasn't much help. I will admit there were some weird, weird websites I found related to JJ. Like I found a website that sells party supplies for JJ the Jump Plane stuff, which actually the website itself is pretty cool because they sell hard to find party supplies and I desperately want to get the JJ party supplies and throw a party, but not until after quarantine's over. I also found like um, a website advertising having JJ come to your birthday party, which is kind of cool and also very creepy. And I found like a couple toys, references to a video game that was made at the time, and some fan fiction, which I didn't read. So JJ's not completely forgotten, but it's definitely been relegated to like the corner with like cobwebs and stuff. JJ. Today, David Mitchell actually continues to work as a producer of children's content. Going through his IMDb page, I actually found that he actually worked on one of my favorite shows growing up, which was Totally Spies. Another show that I thought really notable was Morton Mystery, which I know people also really loved. Most currently, he is the founder of Cottonwood Media. They have produced a couple children's shows that air on Hulu. I was watching the trailers for them and they all seem actually pretty okay. One of the Cottonwood Media shows is Find Me in Paris, which is definitely children's content, but watching the trailer actually makes me want to watch a show. It's about a time-traveling ballerina and she's in modern day and she is going to the ballet school in Paris and it, it gives me like all those vibes that like, like sort of like false nostalgia vibes where it's like, were I a kid? I would love this show. <laughs> JJ was never meant to be a classic. It's a good show for the time, but the reliance on technology really dates it. As well as the fact that the songs just aren't catchy, the characters aren't that memorable. Definitely not the first children's show to just fade away, but it is a little sad that it seems to have been so forgotten. I am glad that, you know, David Mitchell has continued to work in the industry and possibly create good content. Obviously, Totally Spies was great content. But Find Me in Paris looks good. His other stuff looks good. He seems to be actively working. JJ was a springboard for him. And it was, at the time, a pretty loved show. That's all I have for you today. Let me know if there's other shows you'd be interested in me covering, uh, especially like other children's shows. I didn't watch any episodes of JJ for this. I watched clips and stuff. I watched a lot of the music, but I just didn't watch any age of the episodes. But if you'd be interested in having me actually talk about episodes in particular, let me know. I'd do that too. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye V. Goodbye everybody else. I hope you are having a great day. I'm gonna go have lunch. Bye!